Oh, he'll say the picture. This the dude right here, though. Yeah. You see him? The energy that this man right here projected oh. had the uh, government of the, um, Belgium so in fear that he would call the troops to oust the imposters from the land that they murdered him, buried him, and they got scared that he was going to come back. Mm -hmm. so they went and dug him back up. Damn. Chopped his body up into pieces like they did Osiris, and they put him in vats of acid to dissolve him to make sure that he couldn't come back and call the troops to war. This man right here, Patrice Lumumba, killed Damn. by the Congo government infiltrating the African Republic of the Congo. Right? So it's only uh, three prominent cases of the, somebody being so in fear that they chop you up as Nat Turner, uh, Patrice Lumumba, and Osiris. They were scared uh -huh, to uh -huh. death. Now, yep. the, Nat the Nat Turner story originated from a novel. A okay. lot of people think that it originated from a history book, but it originated from a novel. Okay. And it was a story that was based on the rebellions of Denmark Vesey and Gabrielle Prosser, respectively. Okay. Right? So they use the story to enforce the slave narrative to show that, look, the slaves was rebellious. They tried to get free. And this is what we do to rebellious slaves. That's the mm. purpose of that Turner story. So would you say that's a form of alchemy, mentally, psychology, like do psychology on us? It's indoctrination. This is a, okay. this indoctrination. So we're talking about psychiatry, Country. psychology, and sociology in the mind sciences. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Now, I put a post up uh, with a bunch of clips of elders talking on Facebook when we went before our last chat. Uh -huh. And one of them was Dr. Clark talking about the academic plot that was hatched in the Middle Ages. Mm. This takes us back to Notre Dame University and the layover between the slave ship that they tell us in, the, in Notre Dame's cathedral, uh -huh. right, where they hatched the plot as an academic tool of deception and warfare oh, yeah. they want us racist they want us hating people because of their skin color Thanks. hey people that's gonna come help us but when we look at the stories whether it's nat turner a fictional story that's been passed off as history whether it's denmark basey whether it's gabrielle prosser whether it's tucson in the haitian revolution wherever we was at it was somebody that looked it like us that was using all of their resources to stop us from winning the wars that yeah. we were in. We never knew we was infiltrated, so Elijah needed to teach it, Garvey needed to teach it, Noble Ali needed to teach it, Clarence needed to teach it, um, Hulan Mitchell, Yahweh Ben Yahweh needed to teach it because we needed to see that if you put the puzzle together, these organizations cannot be infiltrated by pale face. Right. They look like Go ahead. Us. Go ahead. So Go when ahead. they set Go those ahead. organizations up for us to do business of ourselves for ourselves and to uplift our communities, we was always infiltrated by somebody that looked like us. This gave me the clue that told me it was imposters on the land because every time we do we stage a uh, a return pattern to reclaim what's ours, somebody looked like us is the one that's the turncoat. That's bringing us back down, right? Right. So now, I can bear. Clearly, and nobody can't tell me blaming on white. The white man ain't white. They've been infiltrating us and keeping us from winning this war because they are aware of the fact we're in a conjure war, and if they can disassociate us from our land rights, then they can disassociate our inheritance to the land and prove we imbeciles in law and worthy mm -hmm. to handle our own affairs and our own estates. But because one of us figured it out and I go on a mission to tell all the collective clans, I don't give a fuck about the slander, the backbiting, the undercutting, the undermining. I'm still going to stand on the truth and tell it from the mountaintop. Right. Our people are going to become aware of the value of the truth from telling them as time roll on, they become more and more aware. And the more they become aware, the more dangerous we are to this system. Uh-huh. The system is going to fall. We just have to be 
instrumental in the caving in of the old system and prepared to return back to our old matriarchal order. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. It's not personal to nobody. It's not to tear nobody down or undercut nobody. It's just us doing what we have to do as a people that's in the best interest of the most people, whether they of our of us or not, they own our land. And as caretakers of the land, we also are responsible to make sure that everybody on the land can live a decent and good life as long as they don't interfere with the others living a decent and good life. Under the artificial contracts in the time of war, they was able to use those things as tools of oppression to separate us and keep us from ever joining forces to overthrow the country. Mm -hmm. That's what they feared. So now, hey, the dirt. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll yeah. go ask another question. So now, All right. Go ahead, go ahead. We won, they lost. They got to suck it up just like we did when we had to suffer with them. The good had to suffer with the bad for all of us to be free. Now, I noticed uh, these, because uh, during the Spanish Inquisition, they formulated different words. I noticed the word magic, right? That, and they had these group of beings back in the day during the time of uh, the BCs, uh, uh, ADs, the beginning, they called the mad guy, right? And like the mad guy priest. So, People, people think that witch wizards and witches is not like it's like it's shunned by religious, but it's in the but religion talks about the very these very people or wizards like Jesus. All I'm a wizard. Listen, uh, while, read the Bible. Go ahead. While they tearing down witches, warlocks, and wizards, all of their prophets is witches, warlocks, and wizards. That's right. But the That's problem right. is, is when the church told them that these was representatives of the true and living God. They didn't see them no longer as witches, warlocks, and sorcerers. They then seen them as some shit called prophets. And priests. Yeah. Yeah. But all oh, of them got to go through the priesthood. And going through the priesthood, they have to learn the truth. And it's right. up to them. Um, pull up Chuck Misler on YouTube. Chuck Misler. I got you. This dude right here, M I S S L E R. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. But this dude, when he be going through, he open with the script with the Nicene Creed. In the name of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, yada, yada, yada. But then when he get into his teachings, he tell you the truth about what they made up in the Bible. He flat mm -hmm. out be like, that's a contrivance. A contrivance means they made that shit up. Wow. He sit there and tell you, and then he closed back with the script. You know why he do that? Uh, as long as he open and crows with the script, he's authorized to tell you the truth in the middle. He can tell you the truth in the middle if he about what's right. I uh, hold on. I don't want to get copyrighted on this dude, but I I show people on the internet. I just want to see y'all see the screen. So you can go look him up. Oh, uh, here we go, right here. Is it right? Yeah. So he's what you call. Oh, what I think it's called hey, right here. This dude right here. Yeah, that's him. So when y'all look him up and y'all listen to what he's saying, every time you hear him say that's a contrivance, he's telling you that somebody made it up and inserted it and it wasn't supposed to be there. Man, wow. he's a Christian. But he tell you the truth and he used the vehicle of the church to repass the truth cross like a Trojan horse. But are you uh, wise enough to catch what he's telling you? Because he's telling you who's making it up. He's telling you when it's made up. Before this period of time, this wasn't in there. It's a contrivance. They made it up, right? Because uh, he's doing a detailed historical investigation into biblical events. He starts seeing what all of uh, what we see that word right there, iniquity, and all sort of inequity yeah. in the teaching, right? So if yep. you're a Christian and you want to get to what's made up in the church, this is the man to find out because he a Christian and he's telling you where they lied to you at in their face, straight up. In their Damn. face, straight up. Not behind their back. He flat out telling you they made it up. It's a contrivance. Yeah, I got to check that out. Yeah. Hey, so, so who will? Hey, oh, wait, go ahead, go ahead. A lot of these preachers don't tell you the truth. Because they scared they're going to run you off. But he can tell it to you because his ministry has been so founded that he can go through there and show you where all the lies are without mm -hmm. losing his following. He can tell the truth. 
Remember, like uh, Noble Joe, at least they're gonna make the, the European tell you the truth. Right, this is like, how they do it. They use the vehicles that was given to us for our destruction, and they tell you the truth using the same vehicle. Right. So, I had this beautiful conversation with Chief Warhorse today. Oh yeah, go in on that. <laughs> Made my heart happy. Made my heart happy, and my my heart don't get happy much. Uh huh. And I had a beautiful conversation with the sister Phoenix Moon, which also made my heart happy. Go ahead. And um, y'all, she gave me a uh, a page, and she wants y'all to study the videos on her page, right? So everybody, when y'all go over there, please show the sister the proper respect as an elder. And um, if y'all need to get in touch with her, please uh, go through uh, Phoenix Moon or um ishmael bay because they handling um that part of her business for her um she's doing the cooking with the chief podcast i'm in the process of sending of posting this uh link to her page that she wants y'all to go on when you go on this page go to the archives and look for the videos that she did and she said y'all see she's she's going over the information that we need as the collective plans about um what was being done she got uh her information there so oh, yeah, first I gotta go since i woke up great to her hey oh yeah 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 hey look i'm telling you man look uh chief warhorse already put in the work already oh, yeah, yeah. So, the 1992 thing go who, ahead when we first knew that energy, right, trying to get to understand who she is as one of the chiefs and yeah. the work that she's doing, it's the first look. They don't know who we are from Iraq and Iraq. Okay. So they <laughs> be defensive of the chief. If they're not defensive of the chief, they up to something. Yeah, that's right. Right? So they showed the proper defenses for the chief. And then they gave the proper protocol to approach the chief without being disrespectful, without yeah, being good. Right. So we had a blast of a conversation today. I, I can feel all of this stuff coming to the forefront of us restoring everything back to us. Let's get right. it. So no, I'm ready to chop head. I, I'm, I'm just sitting back ready to say, let's get them. We chop the heads. We already got them. We really already got them already. We got like 700 tapes out. Well, we got them already and every day, man. If you've been with us for a while, your, your head already cracked open and scrambled like an egg already. You know what I'm saying? We've been cracking heads and twisted caps for quite some time now. I'm telling you. Yeah, but uh, we end up, uh, shout out, shout out, uh, Chief. Black Four Feathers uh, for getting raw the, uh, information on uh, Chief so we could get in touch with Chief. So, uh, yeah, Brother Love, uh, hooking that up, man. Says, uh, yeah, we've been cracking heads. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? It's coming up right now. I don't know what it is. Shout out Blacker again. Shout out Black. Blacker than Black. Shout out Blacker than Black. Yeah, I. I uh, we go to. Right yeah. So, but Phoenix Moon got all the information to find the information that Chief Warhorse been rolling out. They got some videos of Chief Warhorse on um, the Phoenix Moon channel. Uh huh. Right. So, <clears throat> when y'all understand the work that she's been doing, then y'all know why I said listen to her. Because when, when these big mamas start talking and start, if we as the youth, even as, my, as I am an elder, I'm still not her elder, she's still my elder, uh -huh. right? So we sit there and we get the information so that we can use it to liberate our people with the truth and overcome the obstacle of these misleading narratives they gave us in the thinking that we was Hebrews and Muslims and Christians and that stuff didn't have anything to do with us, but they use it as tools to subjugate us. Once we realize that we all right. They cast the spills on us, man, with this all this shit, man. They cast the spills. Got us waiting on somebody to help us when we gotta help ourselves. All them all them religions make you wait on some God. Yeah. When you can help yourself. Great procrastinator. 
Yeah. Right. So they had God got you praying and begging for some shit that don't never happen. That just is irrational when you can get up and start working day by day, step by step before you know it, you're at the door of your dreams. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's a process of building the self to be ready to receive what the universe got for you. Once you realize your spiritual rank, then you can get your spiritual reward on earth. You ain't got to die. You guys got to remember who you is. All your stuff, all of who you are comes with a package that you are not aware of. But now you about to be aware of the package because the bag about to chase some of y'all down and y'all not going to have to taste the bag. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, if you got any questions for Rod, uh, drop them in the chat. Oh, this is what, that's another question I want to ask you, Rod. Uh, okay, so like because to me, it's a lot. Of, my definition of alchemy, I guess, is different from yours. Mine is real broad on what alchemy is. You know, say because some things you say that uh, alchemy, I think that those things, some of them things, can be alchemy. Uh, especially, alchemy is is a bigger science that incorporates a lot of little smaller sciences as the training uh-huh. parts for you to become an alchemist. Mm-hmm. Like when I brought up chemistry, chemistry mm-hmm. is teaching how. Um, chemicals interact so that when you become an alchemist, you know how the elements interact. You know what uh-huh. response to get. Then you can uh-huh. translate that into the, when this element is seen in the human form, it's presented in this fashion, a phenotype. Uh-huh. Right? In order to determine the source of this phenotype, I have to look at the genotype, the genetics. Right? Okay. But all of these are training parts to becoming the great alchemist, right? The one that can uh-huh. balance the forces of the universe. Uh-huh. But before you can balance the forces of the universe, you have to balance the forces in the self. Uh-huh. As above, so below, as within, so without. Uh-huh. Hey, like I say, okay, like for example, or what I'm saying about my definition of an alchemist, uh, like I consider like Bernie Mac, like the comedians, I consider them high power alchemists. Why why I say that is because the brain has certain chemicals in it called hormones. And when somebody tell a good joke, right, they release, they act, activate certain hormones in your brain to stimulate you. So that's dealing with chemicals. And when somebody macking or macking to a chick, if you can mack to a chick, right, and release dopamine, even smoking weed is, is alchemy because kind of, it's changing the chemical the structure and you're releasing certain chemicals in your brain like dopamine. So... To, to me, when, when alchemists, like a, a comedian is an alchemist, like I say, they tell you a joke, boom, you laugh. Laughing, like Tahuti said, take Tahuti said laughing is good for the soul. It's the best thing to do, to be able to laugh. Especially if you're scared and anything like that, you can laugh your shit out. But but that's dealing with, they are, I said the reason why I say they're alchemists is because when they talking and tell you this joke, like I say, it released that dopamine, certain chemicals in the brain to make you laugh, to make you, you know, yeah, all but- it. That's that's not uh, the true definition of an alchemist, but that is a, a master of a specific craft. The craft, yeah, art family, form. right? The royal family had ascribed the craft of comedy to the family known as the jesters. Uh huh. Go ahead. I know you're talking about. Go ahead. The jesters come in in modern circuses is the clowns. Uh huh. Right, and the clowns are the ones that come to entertain using their body in all distorted forms in order to show you the extremes of the human human body. And then they turn out to have a sideshow, mm-hmm. right? With human mm-hmm. oddities to show you the abnormalities that's in the human genome, uh-huh. right? These all come from a specific responsibility of a particular family. Uh-huh. The family is recognized when you say jester, First thing somebody think of is a character that looked like the Joker. Yeah, with the funny hat and shit, funny shoes. Right, but the Jester is actually the comedic family line of the royal family. And they use comedy to tell the king's secrets in the open without nobody knowing what he's talking about. But mm-hmm. Jokester and the one who read the joke. Go oh, yeah. ahead. <laughs> That's what they call the boule. Because okay. the boule cold flip back to the chief or the king uh-huh. um, in the French culture in order for the king to know what's going on on the land. So he sent him a message as a poem, as a song, and then he put it on the drum. 
when they put it on the drum, it's com coming into our culture. Mm -hmm. The drum is the heartbeat and the center around which we develop ourselves. Because mm -hmm. everything comes to proceed forth from the first heartbeat of life. Right? Yes, and when the heart, heart break beat, the brain beats right along with it on one chain, a single connection. And then as we develop, the connection is broke. And we spend all our life trying to find out how to reconnect the heart and the mind so that we can become a greater being within the self. Yeah, I think Tahuti talk about that in the uh, Emerald Tablets. Hey, another thing too, because uh, we talked about rhythm, right? And you uh, alignment, alignment. Like your body can be al on a line. Like I feel like like when I got I used to play football, I got hit on my right side. And then it, like I ain't been right ever since. Like my arm or something's out of whack or something right i went to a chiropractor but they like the one i went to was whack but you know uh but how how important is uh like you say rhythm alignment timing like i say we have probably talked about this a little but i want to go into more in depth on because because you got to do shit at the right time in order for it to hit man because like i say i noticed to hootie he always did everything at a certain time like specifically dealing with like uh astronomy really all of his moves were based on okay, that's gonna this is gonna happen then when that son when like they talking about okay, that's another this is what I want to ask you really. Okay, they talk about my wife keep on begging me to ask you this question, and every time I forget on, I forget. So now that I just thought about it, let me ask you. Uh she said about the 2024 uh, eclipse. What is your take on that? And like is it some kind of natural disasters could happen during this time, or is it just a sign and a god or what is uh these people going in on the uh the 2024 eclipse that's gonna cross across the United States? You got anything on that? When the last time we had the eclipse, you know? I think it was like uh 2000 and uh it was just recently, like a couple of years ago. We had a big one where it went across. It was like maybe five or six years ago. Somebody could drop it in the chat if they remember. I can't remember was it 2017 or something like that. So the um the, uh, the, yeah the um let's see I forgot where I'm about to go about the uh, uh, the eclipse oh yeah eclipse is a common occurrence rarely do yeah. the eclipse cause a major effect it's normally a minor yeah. effect right some people's energy will feel blocked others will be liberated right okay. but Anytime you see an eclipse, it's not really nothing to panic about because it's a, such a common phenomenon. Most of us wouldn't even know that eclipses was taking place if we wasn't watching the Thanks. idiot box. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead. <clears throat> so the, the energy that the eclipse produced, yes, it's going to change the energy um, to some degree, but it's only going to be short-lived and it's going to be uh, small energy changes. Now, But you got to always remember when energy begins to move, the butterfly effect is always at work. Mm -hmm. And the butterfly effect, when it reaches critical mass, becomes the Mandela effect and changes the reality instantly. And because mm -hmm. it happened so suddenly, we think that it was just a storm erupting. A hurricane mm -hmm. just came. There's more to it than that. These are the answers to butterfly effects somewhere else. Small things lead to big things on a large scale. You drop the pebble in the lake, and it's going to leave a big-ass ring over time. You let that pebble hit that with enough force. Hey, it's good, it's good that you say that because uh, I know the moon is dealing with the magnetic gravity of the planet. Now, so does that, when that sun goes in front of the moon like that or whatever, does that affect the magnetic gravity of the planet, like during that time? It's so like the opposite. Okay. It's slightly opposite, but it's so un, it's so so common that it's so all uh, barely noticeable to us on the planet, other than somebody telling us we have an eclipse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. But yeah, those yeah. who are right. into the um, sciences can use it to read information on the eclipse because a certain types of effects happen to the energy, like uh, 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 my girl Phoenix. She can read uh, Phoenix Rising. Yep, yep. Phoenix, shout out Phoenix Rising. Right. She can read the eclipse and tell you which energy based on where the star alignments are. She know how the energy from the eclipse will affect us. Okay. 
Okay. I haven't studied any other particular eclipse to determine how they're going to directly yeah. affect us yeah. in other planetary positions. But I do know that most of the time eclipses occur, the energy change is so subtle, 99.5% of the people barely perceive the change. That's right. Right. Hey, so let me ask you this. Okay. All right. So uh, there's alchemists, uh, wizards, witches, warlocks, or whatever you want to call them, right? They're going to be taking, like, saying that, okay, this is a sign from God. Because I was watching this uh, movie with Terminator with Arnold Schwarzenegger earlier called End Days. And the dude at the beginning, he walked to the window. He see, like, this, I guess, a comet over the sun. He said, oh, that's the eye. He looked in this scroll. Oh, that's the eye of God, a sign from God. Because you got to keep in mind, these suckers all steal their stuff from Tahuti. If you go, like, all the stuff they got, I'm going to be breaking this down probably on the, uh, I got some tapes coming out. I'm going to be breaking all this down in detail, but they steal all their stuff from Tahuti. And then, so they they doing based everything they got, even their Bible, even their information, they base everything off astronomy. Just like uh, the, the ancient Egyptians doing, the Mayans, everybody, they they, they base their whole, their whole story is based off astronomy. So look, Twitter, yeah. if you had a list of 10 lottery numbers, and which day they power balls they gonna come out okay right would you play them knowing you're gonna hit if you play Hell yeah i'm gonna play them if i know i'm gonna hit but that'll be so this is what they doing in their exploitation they know they're gonna they're gonna be recover substance from harnessing mm. our energy mm. we just don't know we surrendering it in order to stop it that's where we at right they got the cheat codes and they using them on us and they laughing at us while they're using the cheat codes because they went in all that is up yeah here. That's that's right, bro. right but what they didn't realize is that it's punishable by death go ahead so now they got an answer to the traitorism that they was involved in and they can receive any punishment